Good morning, Mr. Harkins and committee members. This is Karen. We're ready to go. Okay, uh, good morning, Karen, and uh, good morning to uh, members of the committee and colleagues from town council. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Karen, uh, are we in compliance uh, with FOIA? Yes, sir, we are. Uh, would you kindly initiate the roll call, please? I sure will. Mrs. Becker? Tammy, are you on board? Mrs. I see her logged in. I don't see her there. Okay, Mr. Harkins? Here. Mr. Lennox? Here. Mr. Ames? Here. And we're, we're just waiting for Mrs. Becker. We're reaching out. I'm reaching out to her right now. You got minutes to approve. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and since uh, you have a quorum. Uh, as we have a quorum, we'll, uh, we'll proceed. Uh, we have the uh, minutes of the November 23rd, 2020 uh, meeting minutes uh, before us for approval. Is there a motion to approve? Bill, I will abstain since I was not at that meeting. Oh, okay, then. Uh, Bill, I was. I was not a member of the committee at that point. I've read the minutes, but I can't. <laughs> All right. uh, uh, Tammy, uh, <laughs> Tammy, you're critical here. <laughs> okay. Tammy, we see your smiling face, but don't hear you. So at the beginning of the meeting, I was trying to get a battery charged in case I died this one again. Okay. So I apologize. Why am I critical? Oh, because you're the only uh, witness besides myself to the me <clears throat> meeting of uh, for the minutes of November 23rd, 2020, and well, I I can move to approve those minutes. All right, and I'll second. All those in favor? So moved. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Karen, do we have any uh, citizen comments today? Mr. Chairman, public comments concerning today's agenda items were to be submitted electronically via the town's open town hall portal. The public comment period closed Friday, January 22nd at 4.30. At the conclusion of the open town hall portal, there was one citizen comment. You've all gotten a copy of that. Citizens who wished to speak at the meeting had to call in no later than noon on Friday, January 22nd. No citizen signed up to speak at the meeting. Okay. Uh, thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Uh, uh, <clears throat> item six, unfinished business. Uh, we have none. Uh, moving to new business. Uh, our first item is the Mitchellville uh, MOA uh, lease update. Uh, uh, Jamie uh, Laco is on board today. Uh, Jamie, if you could uh, address the highlights and uh, the, the the technical change uh, on funding, please. Yes, sir. Good morning, committee members. Um, you have before you the renewal of our memorandum of understanding, the MOU, um, as well as the lease for the historic Mitchellville Freedom Park. Um, right now, the MOU that we have with Mitchellville will be expiring on March 19th, 2021, and it requires it to be reviewed prior to um, any additional uh, moving forward with that. Um, the approval of the MOU is, is twofold. One is to extend it for an additional two years. And the second change is to add in a management fee. Um, we have a similar structure with the Coastal Discovery Museum. And as you'll recall, the past four years, I believe we've paid um, Mitchellville $100,000 to go towards the salary of um, the executive director, as well as the town has been um, paying for the utilities. So the intent of this was to put the lump sum of $105,000 as a management fee to continue paying those costs and Mitchellville would then put the uh, utilities into their name. Um, the lease has been updated um, for two reasons as well. One, we're eliminating um, the requirements of the submittal of the uh, master plan and business plan because those were accepted and approved by town council on August the 18th of 2020. The second change to that is we've changed um, the requirement of the property to continue as a public park. 
um, as you'll recall in the master plan, there is the intent for Mitchellville when they get fully up and running to have um, the entrance to the park gated where an admission fee would be paid, thereby not really meeting the definition of what a public park should be. So we've added that um, should the town have the ability to relocate the, the public park, its amenities and water access to a different location, then the public park use of that particular property could cease. Um, and those are the changes to the lease and the MOU. I also wanted to note that Ahmad Ward, the executive director of Mitchellville, is available on the line for questions as well. Uh, thank you, Jamie. Uh, I'd now like to uh, invite Ahmad Ward to uh, give comment if he chooses to before opening it up to uh, council comments. Uh, Ahmed, any thoughts, comments? Can you hear me? Yeah, good morning. Uh, no no uh, extensive comments. Just wanted to uh, thank town council uh, for its continued support of our project as we move closer to the goals of uh, getting this uh, very important project off the ground. Um, just for your benefit, we are uh, beginning campaign management, and so we're looking forward uh, to be able to get into um, funding to start construction on the site as soon as humanly possible. So we'll keep you posted on that. And so no comments about the, the lease. We we agree to the terms. We think it's um, it makes sense for us to see how we can move forward and then be able hopefully to take control of the site uh, to manage it fully. And so I just want again, wanted to thank you for your support here and, and what you've done to help make Mitchville a reality. And if you have any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them. Okay, thank you, Ahmed. All right, right. we'll begin now uh, with any comments. Uh, David, if you'd be so kind to weigh in. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, really no extensive comments because I've reviewed it and I've been working with Mitchellville, so mm -hmm. I'm in favor of uh, this uh, MOU. Just one question uh, about the, and perhaps Jamie can answer this, the second point you made that uh, once Mitchellville became uh, actually a gated property, uh, we would have to designate another park uh, to take its place. Uh, did I understand that correctly? It's not designate another park. Um, if we were to gate the property, it wouldn't technically be a public park any longer. So it's um, the intent to possibly relocate that but it's not something that has been voted on. It's not something that's been moved forward. It's just if that were to happen, then the public park portion of the historic Mitchell Freedom Park could then go away. But until the town has taken steps to relocate that, it has to remain a public park. And, and, specific, and specifically, it's the, the beach access is probably the major point within mm -hmm. that. Uh, in that we never want to lose public access to our waterways. And so, and talking with Ahmad and some of the other members of, of staff uh, in the Mitchellville group, once they get to the point where they're looking at possibly implementing their business plan, there's an option to relocate the parking area and the access trails to the beach area to outside of what's going to be gated as part of the Mitchellville uh, area. And so it's an option that we can take a look at, but it's something that if, if that is the direction that they end up going, we need to kind of explore so that we can maintain the public's access to those waterways. Thank you. Appreciate uh, that. Uh, would you just comment, uh, <clears throat> as I recall, you spoken about the importance of maintaining the integrity of, of of the uh, of the area, your thoughts, please. Sure, uh, and and Josh touched on it a minute ago. One of the things we want to be able to do, uh, since we we are talking about a twenty three million dollar project when every when everything is there, uh, we want to be able to control those assets. Um, even though you know technically you wouldn't have a problem with people coming through the park to see things, it for our business you want to be able to have people coming in who are specifically coming to see you. And so, for for instance, the the section where we're talking about recreating the homes, uh, we'd have to have some control over who's going in to see. And if it's just regular access, people going down to the beach, we also run the risk of folks uh, just either leaving trash, uh, maybe not taking complete care of a facility. I've been in a museum field for 21 years, and sometimes even your visitors will. Uh, yank on things, pull on things, uh, create uh, issue for you. 
And just to make the most out of the investment that needs to take place, we want to make sure the people are coming in who really want to see it. And we're not, uh, you know, excuse the terminology, clean up boogie boards or, or trying to get beach balls out from, uh, from the areas. It's more of a protective situation for the, the, the money and investment we want to put into interpreting the site. And so that's why we want to control access a little bit. This is also why in conversations with Josh, we've discussed uh, if we can create a different situation for people to access the park to the, the beach, excuse me, that we there are some trail sections in our lease area that we would definitely work out so they can get we can figure out a different way to get to those areas so that you don't have to completely take away the pathway that you still get to the beach at that pathway entrance and i think there's a way for us to do that so we want to make sure that we're we are, are working with you on uh, creating this space for access we understand the importance of access we just want to make sure for our benefit that we can control it just a little bit so there's not just people just trying to go through just to get to the beach okay. uh, thank you ahmed uh, uh miss becker please and like, oh, oh, yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah, oh, we, uh, Stephanie, please, you have a comment, please, Joe. Uh, yes, just in that regard with getting people access. So, there are those five parcels on Beach City Road that are co owned by Hilton Head and the county. So, we could certainly have a discussion about adding some parking specifically for public access to the beach and the waterway we would just have to have those discussions and i could i would be more than happy to bring that to our committee and have them review that um once we start talking talking about that plan a little bit further down the road very good yeah uh thank you stephanie your, your comments quite helpful thank you uh tammy please thank you so this is one of the um, points that from the beginning I was particularly um, interested in as I appreciate and respect the idea of maintaining those assets and being cognizant of um, their long-term uh, value, uh, initial cost and long-term value to the organization. We have many places on the island where we've invested and have, um, I just feel very strong all of the properties on Hilton Head that are so critical for people to have access to um, are open and in the future. Okay. Th thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, Mr. Lennox, please. Thank you, Bill. Uh, on the uh, MOU, this is a two-year extension of the existing MOU, and I think that makes sense. That was our intent a couple of years ago. On paragraph three of the MOU, as it pertains to maintenance, town is assuming at its cost and expense responsibility for janitorial, landscaping, and general maintenance of the park. Uh, and I think that was our intent from the beginning as well. Uh, paragraph 3C is talking about the town will continue the 10-year capital improvement plan for the park. Uh, I think there's benefit in some sort of an annual review of the status of that plan, uh, lest it get away from us. Uh, and I think one of the things we may consider, Bill, would be either having that 10-year that plan come back to this committee or to the Finance and Administrative Committee for an annual review at or about budget time each year. All right. Uh, uh, on paragraph five, operations. Uh, Jamie, I'm, I'm not sure I caught your comment regarding uh, the rent of 105,000 going to Coastal Discovery. Is that in addition to the 100,000 for the executive director? or does that include the 100,000? And this is a um, agreement we, we mirrored from Coastal Discovery Museum. They receive a management fee for managing the Honeyhorn property. And so that's where this came from. And the $105,000 is going to Mitchellville for their management and uh, payment of the utilities for the historic Mitchellville Freedom Park. So is it in, in addition to the grant that we gave Mitchellville for the executive director's salary? 
Not an addition. It would take place of it. Excellent. Uh, I'm unclear as to what the second, second uh, sentence in paragraph 5A means. It starts, Mitchellville shall raise the balance of its operating budget as shown in operating account profit and loss statement from sources other than the town for the annual operating budget of Mitchellville. I'm lost. What does that mean, Jamie? Uh, it means if there is, is funding needed above and beyond the $105,000 that Mitchellville will be responsible for raising those funds. Is that like a match? No, no. It's just if, if they have costs above that 105, they would be responsible for their own grants or fundraising or capital expenses that they would have to raise that on their own separate of town funding. Understand. So from sources other than the town uh, will be the source of that revenue. Yes. Got it. Uh, paragraph 6C, financial statements. I don't recall, what is the date of our last annual financial statement and do we get interims? Um, we get the, we do not get interims. Their budget year ends on December 31st and as of January 30, 31st, they uh, will send their statements to us. Um, and I have received those from Ahmad and I have those for the past three years. So we have a 12-31-20. We have a 12-31-20 financial statement. Uh, I don't believe I've received the most recent one. Ahmad, did you send me that one? No, we're finalizing our, our end of year stuff right now, so you get that as soon as we finish. Yeah, nor we normally, it's, that time. Yeah, normally it's about a quarter behind, so I, I would expect probably sometime in the March, April time frame. Okay, and the, the last uh, question or comment I have, Ahmad, uh, who is your CPA, outside CPA? Uh, Michael Thompson, CPA. Have you asked him about the differential in cost from doing an audit every three years versus doing one every year? And the reason I say that is uh, routinely when a CPA or external audit firm comes in and they're doing an audit of uh, financials that they haven't audited, uh, it's usually more work, more effort, and more expense. I wonder what the difference would be in doing the uh, audit every three, three years versus doing it every two years. That may be something that you casually ask him because, for example, doing it every, every three years, it might be $5,000 a year for those triannual audits. If you do it every year, it might be $3,000 a year because they're, in essence, auditing their own numbers. Right, well, we haven't had that specific conversation, but I will tell you what we're looking at doing is, um, just for general financial practices, doing a yearly audit. Uh, just, you know, just standard and practices. Yeah. Uh, we're a little small at the moment, but we yeah. do plan on doing the audit for 2020. Yeah, and uh, I understand. I understand the issues of cost um, based on a budget your size, and so I think you're approaching it the right way. That's all I have. Thank you. If uh, I could ask Mr. Lennox in his role as chair of the finance committee, uh, Tom, is it your recommendation that uh, your committee and Ahmad think about the value of a? Um, of an annual capital review? Yeah, I've, I've seen uh, Ahmad and his board's work and, and, and I like it and I'd like to keep it at the fore uh, in front of council and if through the F&A committee, that, that's absolutely fine with me if uh, uh, Ahmed is for it as well. Do whatever you need us to do. Okay, very good. And then uh, in terms of an in, of an interim statement, I mean, I see the value of an in, interim statement. Is behind your question, uh, Tom, the recommendation for that to be considered? To the extent that uh, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, eat up all staff time. I, I know again uh, that uh, Ahmad and Peaches prepare 
monthly statements. And, and again, I'm very comfortable with them. Uh, if, if they would want to get those in front of us, not on a monthly basis, but maybe every six months, uh, there's value in that as well. Um, uh, could you just take that under consideration, please? Sure, sure. So we'll be, just for clarity's sake, and when I go back and talk to my folks, we'll be talking like, a, you know, mid-year, like a, yeah. you know, six-month interim, see where we are? Yeah, at the end of your six month, that's appropriate, sure. Okay. All right. Uh, and we have as a, a guest, Mr. Brown, one of our colleagues in town council. Uh, Alex, would you like to weigh in on anything, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I am pleased with dialogue thus far. I'm just here in a supporting role today, so I will yield my team time to you all in continuing the process. Okay, thank you. All right. If, need a motion? Yeah, sir. if there are no other comments, uh, may I have a, a motion uh, from this committee uh, to propose for consideration uh, this lease before town council? I would make that motion to approve uh, the uh, MOU as uh, submitted and uh, forward it to council for its uh, full review. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ames. Is there a second? Okay, uh, Tammy's offering a second. Any other comments? Karen, if you could kindly do a roll call, please. Certainly. Mrs. Backer? We lost her. Oh. Yep. Mr. Harkins? Uh, yes. Mr. Lennox? Yes. Mr. Ames? Yes. Mrs. Backer, you? Gave a thumbs up. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. And uh, just a comment be before we enter the next item on the agenda, the, the Ford Shell Ring Partnership. Um, Angela, as you see, we have item C, uh, the Buford Housing Authority. Uh, Angela uh, Childers has uh, kindly uh, offered to participate in that discussion uh, today. Uh, and her time is going to be very limited. So if I do see her come up on the screen, I'm going to ask if we could uh, stop temporarily our discussion on the Ford Shell Ring uh, and let Angela speak and then we'll go back to that. All right, so uh, the Ford Ring Shell Ring Partnership, uh, we have two uh, knowledgeable people on this subject to give an overview. Uh, we have Jamie and we have St uh, Stephanie Nigel. Uh, Jamie, uh, from the town standpoint, could you give an overview? And then, uh, Stephanie, if you would do the same from a county standpoint, please. Absolutely. I will leave the details of what's being proposed up to Stephanie, um, and then I can jump back in afterwards to offer any comments. But um, we are asking that the committee forward a recommendation to council authorizing um, the execution of a joint ownership and operating agreement that will allow the county to move forward with um, uh, development and permitting of the Ford Shell Ring property. And so I'll let Stephanie explain to you what uh, is being proposed. Uh, Stephanie, again, welcome. Thank you. Um, thanks for uh, seeing me, putting this on the agenda today. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, so this property was co-purchased 50-50 um, between the town and Hilton Head, or between the town of Hilton Head Island and Beaufort County in 2003. Um, it does protect a significant archaeological structure. Uh, the Hilton Head Island Archaeological Society is very interested in this property. I've been in communication with them for the last three years-ish. Um, and uh, they are very supportive of this project. Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, while you're speaking, Stephanie, I was just asking Josh if he could put up on the screen a picture of the site. But, but oh. please continue. I'm sorry. To okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, so the uh, when the property was purchased, there was actually an agreement made between the town and the county that it would be opened up for um, uh, passive recreation use. And so when I was hired, 
uh, back in 2018, I went through several different agreements that the county had with um, multiple town cities, other organizations, uh, trying to get those agreements fulfilled. So obviously this one is 17 years in the making. <laughs> and um, so we've just now started a conceptual plan to allow um, very basic earthen trail, um, uh, an access area for a minimal amount of vehicles, probably maybe up to five parking spaces, um, a trail key, uh, kiosk, uh, trailhead entrance for pedestrian only, and then a maintenance um, fencing and access gate on the backside um, for emergency vehicles, but also for any kind of maintenance that might be needed um, from the town, from the county, or from the Hilton Head Archaeological Society, who we would also enter into an agreement for interpretive um, uh, interpretive tours or interpretation that they would like to give to the to the property. Um, so it's very very basic and minimal. Um, the original agreement called for a future um, boat ramp. But I am not in favor of that, given the sensitivity to the site. However, if the town of Hilton Head Island would still like to pursue that, then we could definitely have more discussion about that. Um, it's just such a small area, and I there's not a lot of room there for boats and trailers. Um, so unless it's a need on the island, then um, I think we could po probably forgo that part of the original agreement. Uh, I do have funding through the Rural and Critical uh, Lands Preservation Funds that was allocated by the council to do these improvements. Um, so the county would be uh, paying for the cost of the capital improvements and then part of the intergovernmental agreement or the, the joint operating agreement would be um, the town, if the town could provide maintenance services with um, mowing the trail, trash pickup, uh, that kind of thing. And then the county would be also long-term responsible for if something was damaged, like if a fence got damaged or if the gate got damaged, then we could um, look into uh, handling that cost. And that's really it um, for right now. I know the Archaeological Society folks were interested in, in joining to um, say some words of support, but I don't think they were able to get in by the, the um, citizen comment date or uh, mm -hmm. timeline. So they may have posted some um, comments on Facebook. Hey, uh, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Jamie, any concluding comments in terms of the overview, please? Um, no, sir. Uh, we've been in discussions with it, and um, I, I have the site plan available if you'd like me to show it on the screen. Um, and just we would hammer out any specific performance standards and, and things like that within the agreement. Could you just hit her on the way on television? Okay, uh, thank you. Now, from a, a maintenance standpoint, do we have some sense of what the, uh, the call will be on that in terms of uh, our budgeting activity? Um, and speaking with the facilities management for basically what we call mowing and blowing and clearing of the trail, as well as the opening and closing of the gates, would run about $750 a month. Okay, thank you. All right, let's open it up to the uh, committee comment, please, uh, Mr. Ames. Oh, uh, one moment, uh, Stephanie has a comment, please. Can, I just would like to make one more um, comment about the gate opening. It could be possible that we do an automatic timed gate, so there wouldn't necessarily be a need for somebody to go there every day and open and close at dawn or dusk. We could, uh, something that I'm incorporating into many of my other parks are, are timed gates, um, and they, really, really help cut down on that um, right. daily traffic. Right. Now, for the uh, public that's <clears throat> tuned in to this meeting, uh, some may not uh, understand uh, the historical importance of this site. Uh, Stephanie, would you like to give a brief comment on that? Or Jamie, please. 
I will leave it up to Stephanie if she probably has more information than I do. <laughs> Stephanie, uh, if you would. Sure. We did have somebody come, um, I guess it was just before the pandemic and in the fall of 2019 to do a survey of the shell ring. Um, it is a Native American site. It does look like it's um, it was more of a um, living quarters situation and not just um, something that um, where oysters were deposited. It was more they were they were very specifically placed uh, in order to be um, more of a a permanent structure. So um, we are still getting information from that researcher who was from New York, and so um, they are doing their thesis on the property. They are supposed to be coming back, I believe, after the pandemic in order to fi finish up their research. And then once we have that information, it'll be a report that we can share to everybody. Okay. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, uh, comments from committee members? Mr. Ames, please. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Stephanie, uh, great job. Uh, I'm excited about this. Jamie, thank you for your help on it. A specific question, uh, Stephanie, when does this date back to? Is it about 1,000 or is it further than that? I do not have that <clears throat> on me at the moment, but I would say that that, I believe that is the general range, about 1,000 years. Think I think the shell, ring, the shell ring in sea pines is somewhere in that uh, time frame. Um, yes. Let me, um, I, I think this is very important. Uh, I'm glad we're looking at putting a focus on it, but uh, I think that the capital investment is only half of the story. Um, the uniqueness of Hilton Head's history is the other half. And unless we have a plan where we are marketing this as a part of the collection of that history, the collective, um, and the rest of the history, Civil War, pre-revolutionary, and so on and so forth, I think we're missing the boat. So the point I'm making that it's good that we were we're adding this particular pearl to the necklace, but we ought to market the entire necklace so that when people are thinking about relocating to the island or visiting the island, they're captivated by this very unique history. So I think it's important for us as council to be promoting this on the website, the town website, encouraging the chamber to speak to the history of the island, and in particular, this very unique, and when I say unique, I'm not sure that 1% of the people who come to the island are aware of this connection to Indian history. And the fact that we do have remnants of shell rings on the island that could very well uh, uh, encourage people to come to the island and, and see what is unique about this place. So uh, my point, Bill, and um, to the rest of the committee is that we have to make sure we tell the story in order to make our investment in the place worthwhile. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ames. Uh, Mr. Lennox, please. Stephanie and Jamie, thank you. Um, I've, I've not seen this site, uh, which confirms uh, what David is saying. Uh, I will, however, uh, take a look at it uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, I think the $750 a month in additional or existing maintenance expense is a small price to pay for a site as historical as this appears to be. Uh, I'm definitely in favor of this joint effort with uh, Beaufort County. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Tammy, please. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I've been trying to go between devices that have batteries charging. Uh, 
Uh, Tammy, if you could give a thumbs up uh, in terms of proceeding with this, if you can't Are you speak. able to hear me? Yes. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, now we are. Okay, good. I just wanted to be able to um, say that this is an important project. Hold on one. Hold on one second. I'm not sure what's going on. Sure is that better? Sure no, you're echoing. There. Okay. So I wanted to be able to say that this is an important project. Hilton Head is so rich in our history, and every opportunity that we have to celebrate the depth um, of the roots here are certainly important. And I'm happy that this will be added. This aspect will be added to that. One of the things that comes to mind, though, is a realization, and, and I think that we need to say um, cognizant with the front of our mind as we begin to move forward and make decisions on each area of the island that we impact, that we too will be part of that history, generations and hundreds of years to come. And that when folks look back and see what we've done, that there's something that they also want to celebrate. And so I just wanted to take the moment to say that to remember that we are part of history building as well in terms of what we plant on this island and that we need to be very careful and specific, specific about it. And I think we generally are, but I think overall there are some places where we need to take our time, take a breath and look at the development and the impact that we make for that historical tale. Thanks. Excuse That's all. me, Chairman, Chairman Harkins, this is Krista. I just read on the um, Facebook feed from one of the historical members and they said that the Ford shell ring is about 4,000 years old. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. For that information. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Brown, uh, would you like to share any thoughts? Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, thank you, Stephanie, uh, for, for working on this and Jamie as well. Um, you know, I, I, I tie this uh, this project, well, the beginning of this project, you know, back to our core values of our uh, comprehensive plan, and um, we're definitely being uh, regional. We're working with the county. We're being inclusive. Uh, I'm excited about that, and eventually, it will also touch on our um, on our economy. As uh, all of my colleagues have said, this is a, a very very significant piece of history right here on Hilton Head, which sets us aside from a lot of our resort competitors. Uh, so, you know, improving this area is uh, definitely um, in our best interest. Um, the other core value that I want to, to just touch on briefly, and I'm not quite sure of the process here, but I feel obligated to, to speak on it, is the, the infrastructure. Uh, so I can appreciate the improvements that we're making. I understand that there's going to be some roadway improvements in that area. Um, I have gotten uh, several concerns from citizens in that area about the current drainage situation. Um, the way that the, the highway, Squire Pope Road, is configured, there's a lot of runoff uh, from that road and, of course, um, the development in that area onto individuals' properties. So I can appreciate that once we start the improvements that our engineers here at the town and at the county will be taking a look at the particular site and making sure that it, uh, it meets all of our current standards. However, I would ask that we take it a step further and consider a comprehensive study of the area and see how we can improve it. As Mr. Ames mentioned earlier, this is just the first step of this project. Um, we need to be thinking more long term. And if there are additional funds that are going to be needed, and it may not be from the town or the county, it may be state infrastructure funds that could help us alleviate some of the current conditions. Um, I would appreciate that we move in that direction. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brown. If there is no other discussion, uh, yes, uh, Stephanie, please. I would just like to um, make a note. Um, uh, I, as a, a biologist, am very aware of 
uh, how impermeable surfaces affect drainage and water flow, especially in the low country. And so just to assure all, all on this call, um, it will be a permeable parking area as well as just an earthen trail. So there won't be any um, impermeable surfaces that would um, create any additional stormwater runoff. And we are also going to improve the entrance area where the culvert is so that that, uh, right now there's kind of this um, swale between the road and the property that has a very small culvert and that swale is kind of filled in a little bit. So it's gonna end up getting uh, improved right there at the entrance so it'll have some better drainage right there at least in front of in front of our property. Bill? Uh, Bill? Uh, yes, Mr. yes sir. Um, I wondered if you would be willing to um, include as a part of the motion uh, a, a marketing plan or a plan that uh, elevates this and other historic sites in the community um, so that we're moving forward with that. Um, again, capital investment is about half of the issue. The other half is having people take advantage of what we've invested. So I'd, I'd like to include a marketing component in the motion if you uh, say that's okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ains. You're hard to get ahead of. I was thinking of the same thing. So I'm going to respectfully ask you if you would uh, uh, pull together the motion to include that. I'd appreciate that for consideration. I would Mr. like to make, make the motion that we move forward with the plans for the Ford Shell Ring and included in that a marketing plan of the site as well as other archeological sites on the island. Thank you. Is there a second? Do we have a second? Yeah, we have a second. Uh, any further discussion from committee members? Uh, Mr. Lennox? Bill, I think the idea of a marketing plan is a good one, uh, but I think it should be consistent and parallel with the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Uh, we've got a very detailed master plan that we're going to be talking about uh, later this week, uh, and I don't think we need a standalone marketing plan for archeological uh, sites that are significant. Uh, if we can integrate that and include in the motion something that says consistent with uh, the, the recently completed Parks and Recreation Master Plan, I think that then brings it under that umbrella. I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm willing to change my motion to incorporate what Tom is suggesting, but I, I, I'm trying to highlight the importance that the town and the chamber working together tell the story of what this island has to offer from a historical standpoint, not only a recreational one, but an historical one. And that's really the, the focus of what my motion was. Right, and I think that builds on uh, Mr. Brown's comment too, uh, how we can differentiate ourselves in, uh, from a, a generic tourism that others are involved in. So uh, we, we have a revised motion. We have a, will the second, Tammy, are you comfortable? I, I all right. absolutely think so. Okay, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, so move. All right, the, uh, the motion as uh, revised, we'll, we'll head toward the next town council meeting. Uh, uh, Stephanie and, and Jamie, uh, you've added a lot to this conversation in terms of substance and knowledge. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Okay. The uh, next item on the agenda, the Sandalwood Apartments and Buford County Housing Authority discussion. Uh, as I indicated earlier, uh, uh, Angela uh, Childers indicated her interest in serving as a resource as we enter this discussion. Uh, I don't see her on the screen yet. 
So uh, uh, let, let me share with you my conversation with her, uh, not to preempt any other discussion on this important matter, but in our, in our last discussion uh, on this subject, uh, I think it was Mr. Ames that, uh, if I may paraphrase, uh, made the comment about sandalwood that maybe it was uh, essentially beyond, it was not realistic to uh, bit by bit try to r repair the structure. It was probably in the best interest uh, of sound planning to actually uh, come up with a new structure. Uh, and uh, so with that in mind, I asked Angela if she would map out in detail the process that she, working with HUD and others, would have to follow to make that a reality. And she agreed to come before us today uh, with that outline and then highlighting from her perspective how we uh, may <clears throat> Uh, join in the effort uh, from a lobbying standpoint or otherwise to be helpful to bring that to a reality. Uh, and uh, she is uh, not here now, so uh, if she does not come on board in uh, that, that work product that she uh, was going to share today uh, is not available, I will make sure that it's distributed to all town council as soon as uh, I received it. Uh, that said, we did have a um, we did have an inspection report uh, on the facility uh, generated by uh, Angela's operation, and uh, that has been shared uh, with the committee members. And uh, I'd like to begin with that. Uh, uh, who would like to give an overview of the inspection report? Uh, for the uh, for the rest of the committee. Alex, do you want to take a crack at it? You're not uh, on the committee, but you're certainly uh, a respected member of, of council, and I know you're, this is in your ward, so uh, please share what you do know. And if I'm putting you on the spot, I apologize. I, no, no, no worries, Mr. Chairman. I, 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 uh, I can give, uh, I can give some, I guess, some light to the situation. Um, uh, before I start, though, I would ask that this is going to be a, a topic of of our concern moving forward. Um, that we have somebody from uh, staff that is assigned to doing this type of of work. Um, the, the report that was sent over was <clears throat> uh, is very comprehensive and it included all of Beaver County Housing Authority sites, not just Sandalwood. Uh, so it took you know a bit of time to try to <clears throat> scrub through it here. Um, but as as an overview, uh, th a couple of things I think uh, need to be pointed out. Um, there were several areas of deficiency, and according to their scoring system. Um, the, the structures in, in uh, at least two cases were um, were scored in a negative fashion. Okay, um, so with with zero being you know baseline, at least in my mind, as the worst, uh, there were areas that were well below zero with the offered amount of points. Okay, um, I'd also mention that the report that we received was a 2019 assessment. Um, I'm assuming that the 2020 is uh, still being developed. Uh, nevertheless, when you take the overall score of a 63, is what I gather, what HUD deems to be as a danger score is 59. So we're four points off at the moment, and uh, I'm going to make uh, you know a, a very very uh, I guess I'm going to call it educated assumption here that uh, within a year's time, we may be even closer to that uh, that 59 that HUD would deem uh, danger zone. Um, 
so I would I would just offer up, you know, the, the report does support uh, what Mr. Ames uh, said at the last uh, meeting that uh, you, you you know we may be too far gone as far as repair of this particular uh, structure. Um, I, I think it is something that we need to be more expeditious in, in trying to, to resolve um, because every day that goes by is just another day of us not bringing any relief to our residents in that area. And I understand that it's going to take, you know, a good bit of time, whatever process that the housing authority has to go through with HUD, uh, you pile on top of that, uh, you know, construction, uh, you know, we, we're, we're talking, you know, five, six years maybe and, and, and getting relief. Um, so the, the, the people that, that live in that, uh, that area are in need of, uh, of a voice. Um, and being that it does re uh, reside in, in our township, um, I think it needs to be a priority of ours uh, to assist the housing authority in whatever way possible to get this done as soon as possible. Um, I won't dive into the details, Mr. Chair, unless there's something in particular that someone wants to, to know about the report, but the, the issues range from roofing uh, to electrical, um, you know, windows that that are supposed to open and do not open. Um, it's just a, a laundry list of, of items. And, and the other thing that I would uh, make note of is HUD typically does just a sampling of apartments from what I understand, okay? So not every apartment is reviewed. Um, so um, if, if you use that ratio of how many apartments were deemed uh, in very bad shape versus the potential, um, you know, the, the report will come back, um, I guess, in a more negative fashion than it already presents itself. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brown. My, my, my thoughts on this, and there, it's early stage thinking, are, there's two levels, uh, two planes of thought. Uh, one is, uh, I think we probably all can agree that the ultimate solution is a, a new product uh, in, in the town. And if that's the case, then following the rules of HUD, which on a practical level, we're probably not going to change. Uh, for the HUD professionals to lay before us, and this is what I'm asking Angela to do, lay before us a PERT chart uh, that will from start to finish uh, outline in detail who, who has to do what to make this happen, and then to insert what role we might play ourselves and what role we might play encouraging others to join on the bandwagon. Uh, no. Then the other plane of thought is, uh, Alex, your, your point's well taken that uh, if we're dealing with the federal government, uh, we are harnessed with a, a very laborious uh, effort that's going to consume a lot of time. So what can we do in the meantime uh, to uh, help encourage uh, a, 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 an improvement to the extent that's realistic on a short-term basis? And uh, I don't have any answer for that right now. The, uh, David, may I turn to you for your thoughts? Yeah, th thank you very much. Um... I think you, you've you've outlined the the sequence. One, we have interim maintenance challenges that we need to deal with, and two, we have a opportunity to uh, completely uh, refresh the housing opportunities or stock for the people who live there and benefit the broader community. Uh, I'm aware of. The, money that Provident Presbyterian Church has been raising has already, uh, I, I understand, um, contributed to the upgrading of the maintenance challenges at Sandalwood. I think there are other people who, in the community who might want to participate in that. Uh, 
I, I think a natural uh, conversation to have is with the Community Foundation of the Low Country, but I know that they're somewhat hamstrung. They have to give money to 501c3s and not government uh, agencies. So, but I, I do think uh, there is a uh, there is an opportunity there because of the new chairman uh, president, uh, and I think we should be encouraging that to happen. Um, the town of Hilton Head has a vested interest in doing something about this project for a variety of reasons that we're all aware of. Uh, so I think there's a partnership uh, opportunity and responsibility there for the town. And certainly the uh, Buford Housing Authority um, is the mechanism uh, through HUD for things to happen. Um, I, I'm a, under the impression, if not conclusion, that we should be advocating very strongly for that project to be demolished and rebuilt in keeping with our community standards as well as for the benefit of the people who live there and perhaps other people who might uh, be able to live there in the future. The model that I'm wondering about is whether or not the town can take, or the state, uh, an organization can take the lead role of redeveloping the property uh, and then turning it over to the housing authority. I don't know if that would uh, expedite the renewal of the property or not. But I know that the the models in the Nature Conservancy, for instance, uh, where uh, certain kinds of funds are used to secure land and then turned over permanently to another um, organization. So I guess my uh, position here is that the town has an active role to play to push forward a solution uh, to upgrade the housing uh, and eventually replace the housing on the Sandalwood property. Um, this obviously fits into the broader challenges of workforce housing uh, and housing for the community generally on Hilton Head Island, and I think it's a part of the solution. Thank you, Bill. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, uh, Mr. Lennox, please, your thoughts? Uh, thank you, Bill. I would start by saying I'm looking at the three-page Sandalwood inspection data report, uh, and I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Uh, it doesn't look good, but nothing seems to reconcile on it. So if there is a more complete report, I'd sure like to see it because I can't make any sense out of the three-page report that I'm looking at. Uh, secondly, you know, we are in a really awkward situation. Uh, the condition, living conditions at Sandalwood do not represent what we would expect in terms of quality of life on Hilton Head Island, but yet we have no status in, in this issue. Uh, this clearly is a uh, state authority and federal government program uh, that is responsible for maintaining and operating this program. Uh, that said, this can't be the only one like this region-wide, uh, statewide, or certainly nationwide. Uh, Josh, I wonder if there are other uh, local governments or municipalities that have had situations similar to this where there has been a federal project uh, that is maintained and operated by the federal government uh, that has fallen into serious disrepair uh, to the extent that there are life-threatening deficiencies. And if so, what, what did they do? Uh, I, I really believe that this is not the first time this has happened and that a lot of other local municipalities have had to deal with something similar. Lastly, I, I do agree that this is part of affordable housing on the island, uh, and I, I tend to agree that probably the most efficient uh, 
a way to deal with it would be to raise the project, rebuild it. Uh, but I recognize that in so doing that, uh, we're putting the people that are currently tenants, you know, uh, out of the house. We are taking their their lifestyle and their living quarters away. What's going to happen to them uh, while whoever rebuilds Sandalwood? So I think there are a lot of things to deal with, um, but I emphasize again that this can't be the first time that this has come up with, and I wonder what uh, other similar situations to this uh, have uh, have used as a uh, as a method of dealing with it. Uh, thank you, uh, Tom. Appreciate your comments. Uh, Tammy, please. Um, so I'm glad that um, Tom was able to address uh, all of those thoughts. I think it's important points. One being that this um, project over at Sandalwood, um, while it's in the town of Hilton Head, um, is private property that has been purchased by Beaufort County Authority and run by a federal organization, HUD, to provide housing. And I've gone out and witnessed the housing personally, and it is substandard in many respects. And I also agree that the report that we see is dated. Um, and I believe, Alex, when we met, we were to receive a current report that was just being completed. And so I look forward to seeing that. Um, I also look forward to hearing what um, Childress has to say with regard to um, all of this. When we spoke to her, as I recall, the idea of um, tearing down a portion and rebuilding on that property was feasible. And I'm not putting words in her mouth, but as I recall, and now if you correct, there were accommodations that could be made as they were, went through their process and did their work. Um, to bring it up to living standards that um, are acceptable and sep certainly represent um, a quality of life and Hilton Head Island's values. Having said all of that, the um, other question that had come to mind as I read the report that we were provided, um, there are some conditions there that look as though they are dangerous to life. And um, I would ask if we haven't I know as I recall the fire um, issues, people being able to get out of safely, and I think those are things that can, that the town can have an immediate impact on. And um, I would ask that if we haven't, um, that we revisit that and. Um, and see if we can make a, a change and make sure that everyone is safe while the details of the rest is worked out. Thanks. Thank you. At, at the uh, pleasure of the committee and uh, Mr. Brown, uh, I, I would like each of you to uh, take on a homework assignment and uh, create an outline that uh, we could present to Angela. At, and that combined outline would, in fact, be the agenda for a singular focused meeting on this subject with her. And uh, I'd like to ask Josh, from a facility standpoint and code enforcement standpoint, uh, to reach out to whomever at the town mm -hmm. to, uh, to give a, uh, an as-is assessment of the physical condition, mm -hmm. if possible. And then, uh, then I think we can have a very organized uh, presentation. Uh, my goal would be to start to cobble together a short-term plan and a long-term plan, uh, recognizing that uh, we are a local government uh, working with a state and federal uh, with state and federal organizations, and also recognizing, as Mr. Lennox said, uh, what's going on here does not reflect what we want in the community, does not reflect well on our image, 
and it it needs it needs whatever help we can we can generate to try to correct this situation. Bill? Yes, sir. In in addition to what you asked Josh to research, I would be very interested in knowing whether or not another jurisdiction put in such a place as we find ourselves found a way for another developer or another agency or another source of money to expedite the construction of a project and then turn it over to the housing authority. I think that there's an opportunity there on that site for us to encourage that to happen, but it would obviously depend on the Buford Housing Authority's willingness to discuss it. Thank you. Thank you. Alex, you look like you're ready to say something, please. Yes. I appreciate the steps forward that you that you are describing, Mr. Chairman. I'm just wondering if the the meeting that we have with Buford County Housing Authority would not only include the executive director, but potentially some board members. Yeah, I think that's a policy determination standpoint. I think that's an excellent idea. Mr. Lennox, Ms. Becker, any comment? Yes. I think we have to be sensitive to where we're stepping. It's my understanding that the Housing Authority is an organization that reports up through county council. So to the extent that we are engaging... No? No, they don't. Josh is doing a check on that, but please continue. To the extent that the authority has direct reporting or accountability to an entity, it makes good sense for us to have that entity part of any and all discussions that we have with the authority. And I think the start point is a clear definition of the statement of the problem, a clear understanding of what the issues are. And then with that understanding, look at the myriad of individuals and agencies that we have to go through to affect change. But a clear assessment of the issue, what's behind the 69 that Alex mentioned? I think that creates the burning platform. And it also says, these are not places that any of us would want to live in. These are places that we don't want others to have to live in. All right, if there's consensus in moving in this direction, then I don't think we need a motion on that. But I think at our next town council, we should share that this is a work in progress. And to keep this on track, we should also create a calendar of activity so we stay on track here. Okay. Yes, Tom. Bill, I have not been a part of any discussions or meetings that we've had with Angela as head of the authority. If we went to Angela and simply ask her the question, does Sandalwood meet your safety and facility standards? What would she say? Yeah. I do not know. And I think the immediate next step, and hopefully we're going to do this today, would be to invite Angela to a session with all of us. And the work product coming from that would be an outline of activity that we could jointly participate in. 
Mr. Brown? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I could react just a bit to Councilman Lennox's question. I sent over this morning, you know, what information I was sent by a concerned citizen to include some notices that were issued from our very own Hillhead Fire and Rescue to the facility. All right. And I'm just going to point out one in particular, which is the lack of fire extinguishers on the first floor. All right. This dialogue started back in August, Mr. Lennox. And the last correspondence that I have was in October, I believe, where the Housing Authority finally sent notice back to our fire and rescue that their property is exempt from fire extinguishers. Well, Mr. Brown, if I could interrupt for a moment. I understand that the fire extinguisher situation has been remedied. That's not to say anything else is not important, but that has been addressed. Okay. Well, the point I was trying to make to Mr. Lennox is that the process has been slow. Okay. We have residents in that area that are living in dangerous situations. Okay. All right. And Ms. Becker can correct me if I'm wrong here, but the attitude towards remedy was not one that I necessarily heard loud and clear when we met with Ms. Childress and her staff. Okay. So I'm just offering up what I know, Mr. Lennox, in that regard. I think that this situation is huge in terms of the magnitude of what it would take to get it right. Okay. And a lot of times when you're in that type of environment and you are the agency that may not necessarily be able to do anything about it right at the moment, you may find, I hate to say this out loud, but pointing outward instead of inward more often. Okay. And that's just the attitude that I got thus far. And I'm hoping that that will change. You know, that's the whole intent here is to hit the reset button. Let's change the dialogue and change the discussion. You know, I'm not interested in pointing fingers at anyone. I'm interested in us collectively. And when I say collectively, us as a town, the residents that live there, the housing authority and HUD point together at the solution. Okay. And I think that's important that we go in that direction. I just wanted to share that with Mr. Lennox. Okay. Thank you. Bill, I go along with what you're proposing, but with a suggestion that you add the chairman of the board of the housing authority and Ron Iannoli, who is the Hilton Head representative on the housing authority in that meeting. Okay. Good. And that underscores what Alex was saying, getting someone at the board level at this meeting. We're talking about something that is really important. Clearly, our discussion right now as we plan for a process going forward will be enhanced dramatically and appropriately by having Angela at a meeting like this. So I'm going to reach out to her today and look at her calendar and see if we can call together either at the next scheduled meeting of this committee or a special meeting where we can, in a very singular way, focus on this. That's the pleasure of the committee. I can see nods here. That's what I'll do. All right. Looking at, if we, I understand now that we have reason, Josh, to go into executive session. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. There's need for an executive session to discuss appointments to boards and commission. Okay. Is there a motion to go into executive session? Is there a second, Mr. Lennox? Okay. 
uh, a ro roll call, Karen? Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Becker? We've lost her. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Mr. Lennox? Yes. Mr. Ames? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, we will uh, move into executive session. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've uh, come out of executive session. Uh, the committee took no action. Uh, therefore, uh, our business for today is concluded. Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Uh, second. Tom seconds. Okay. Uh, second. Bill, yeah, be yes, before, before we leave, I just got a text from uh, Ms. Becker. She had to leave for an appointment and, and uh, is regrets that she had to uh, depart prematurely. Okay, uh, thank you. All right, so you have a motion in a second. Uh, we stand adjourned. Thank you.